Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine. We're going to have a great show today. We're going to talk an about anaplasmosis in cows with Dr. Greg Hanslicek from the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you here in a second. We do use multi-man in our cow herd, and we're finding that there is a benefit. Uh, seems like those cows breed back better. And we also found that by giving our bulls uh, a shot of multi-man before, just before we turn them out, we really get a kick out of that. I've definitely recommended multi-man to several people, and uh, it's a good product. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave, straight, simple, sold. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Greg Hanslicek. Thanks for being here. My pleasure, Dr. Thompson. Always good to have you. Dr. Hanslicek is the director, director of Production Animal Field Investigations here at the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab at Kansas State University. We're going to talk about something that's, that's increasing, at least it seems like to me, in, in awareness and, and clinical cases in our cow herds, and, and that's anaplasmosis. That's exactly right. We used to think of it as a southeastern and, yeah. and upper northern uh, western part of the United States problem, but it is a huge issue in the Midwest, particularly in southeast Kansas and western Missouri. Yeah, we is one of those things. You know, when I went through veterinary school, we learned it as kind of a tropical disease. You know, and now, you know, here we go. We start seeing cases, clinical cases of it out here in our cow herd. So, what what is anaplasmosis? Well, it's it's a bacteria. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's a bacteria that specifically attacks the red blood cells of the, of the cattle. So if we attack the red blood cells of the cattle? Then the spleen recognizes the red blood cells as being formed, and so the spleen removes the red blood cells from the animal. The animal becomes anemic. It, uh, it basically has no oxygen-carrying capability, and, and that's where you start seeing the clinical signs. So we get, get this bacteria <clears throat> um, into our cow, we knock out the red cells, and the red cells are really important in carrying oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. That's exactly right. Well, um, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the geographical uh, location. What are some of the things, you know, can it be subclinical? Can, it, I, mean, I mean, meaning that we don't see the clinical signs? It can be, and that's specifically in animals that have gone through the infection and recovered. Okay. They will be carriers for the rest of their life, and they will be subclinical. You will not see those animals ever have the clinical signs again. And, and the importance of this then uh, beyond the, you know, we'll get into some of the clinical signs and the clinical manifestation, but what are some of the things that, you know, do we see production losses and, and things to that nature when we get into this with, with cow herds? We can. The literature talks about fever and, and loss of milk production, those kind of things. We typically don't see that. What we start seeing are just sick adult cows. And, they, and that's the... The neat thing, or maybe not the neat thing about the disease, is that the younger animals less than a year of age, they do not show clinical signs even if they're infected. It, it is as the animal, the older animals are the ones that are going to show the clinical signs. And any reasoning for that? Or? They, the older animals, those older cows, they, they're able to regenerate those red blood cells is less than, than a calf that's under, a, in, under age of gotcha. one year of age. So. So it gets back to kind of like when you have young people versus older people and the healing capacity and the ability to, to stay healthy, just recover so much quicker. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> cool disease. It is. Well, I appreciate you being here today. We're going to discuss more about anaplasmosis, get into some of the clinical signs, treatments, and prevention, and uh, we'll come back after the break. We sure appreciate you watching Doc Talk, and we'll see you here in a minute. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. 
beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normice in LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Greg Hanslicek, who's a veterinarian and he is the Director of Production Animal Field Investigations for the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And, and, and Greg, we're talking about anaplasmosis in cows. And we kind of left at the end talking about the difference in younger and, and older animals or older cows and, and clinical disease, but let's just kind of march through young the you know the the yearling stock and younger and then the two to three year olds and then the older cows. Okay. What we're going to see if we think we have anaplasmosis. Okay. And and because this is a bacteria, and it's in red blood cells, anything that moves red blood cells from an infected animal to a non-infected animal is the way it's going to be transferred. So we're talking mosquitoes, stable flies, needles, tattoo pliers, those kind of things. So what I'm saying is once you get it in the herd, then the whole herd has the anaplasmosis. But the younger calves, they just act normal. Okay, so they could have the, the disease or have the bacteria on board and they're going to, because their ability to regenerate these red cells, they're going to show clinical signs. That's right. And then the, the animals say under two years of age, they'll show some of the clinical signs such as constipation, maybe abortion, uh, talked about the low production, those kind of things. But they typically do not die. It's the older cows. They show the clinical signs and if you move them or stress them because their body is so uh, starved for oxygen, a good percentage of those animals have a tendency to die. Gotcha. So when we're looking for, for you know, if you're going through kind of, I got a cow in the chute, which we hope to get them to the chute. Right. <laughs> with anaplasma. But if I have a cow up close, what are some of the things I'm, I'm looking that animal over and kind of looking at the, you know, gums, eyes, different things to that nature? That's an excellent question. Uh, early on, they'll have pale. The, the white mem uh, membranes around the eyes and around the vulva will be pale. A lot of times, they'll be open mouth breathing. They'll act like they have pneumonia because their body's saying, we need more oxygen, we right. need more oxygen. Uh, if you're walking them slowly, they'll, they'll be stumbling. They'll be falling down like they've been through the bar too long. Yep. Uh, and then later on, they're, they're actually, their tissues will start to turn yellow. So they get that jaundice. That's exactly what it is. And that's from the breakdown of those red cells and, and that coming out into the fat and, and yep. different areas of the body. So younger animals, not a problem. Two to three years old, we're going to start to see a little bit of the clinical signs. And then we get to those older animals. Um, one of the things we talked about during the break that I thought was pretty interesting is how you can have a cow that's, you know, docile and friendly. But as you were explaining earlier, they start to get starved of oxygen, they're, they're maybe not so friendly. That's exactly right, and, that, and that's what we tell producers. If you have anaplasmosis in your herd, one of the biggest dangers are those animals absolutely become aggressive. 
because their brain starved for oxygen they're not thinking right they're not performing right but they will take you your horse uh the pickup yeah so very so, dangerous yeah well it's you know very interesting bacterial infection very interesting disease and when we come back we'll start to jump into what we're going to do to treat it and then more importantly how we're going to prevent it sure appreciate you being here Appreciate you all watching Doc Talk today. When we come back, more with Dr. Greg Hanslicek talking about anaplasmosis. We're sure glad you joined us. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi there, it's Dr. Dan with your On the Farm Tip. And today, we're going to talk about downed animal care. Specifically, we're going to be talking about down cows. And when we talk about moving one of these animals, we, it is illegal to move one by dragging it or lifting it with chains. If you're going to move a down cow, you want to make sure you put it on a sled, a low boy, or put it in the bucket of a loader. Once those animals are moved, we need to make sure that we can provide shelter, whether it's shade, or, or make sure that we provide nutrition and water. As these animals get better, they'll return to production. And if they don't, you need to make sure that you call your local veterinarian. You've been watching the On Farm Tip today. I'm Dr. Dan. We're sure glad you watched us. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Join the team, the Beef Quality Assurance Team. Getting BQA certified shows you're committed to practices that produce the highest quality beef in the world. And by visiting BQA.org, you can take the online certification course at a time that fits your schedule and from the comfort of your home or office. You'll also find lots of helpful tips on improving animal health and animal handling practices. Get certified, BQA certified, because it's about doing the right thing. Visit BQA.org today and become a member of the BQA team. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. If our local animal agriculture industry disappeared, what else would disappear? The buses that get us to school? The playgrounds and ballparks we go to after school? The books and computers that help us learn and grow? Animal agriculture provides millions of dollars in tax revenue that pay for our school improvements, that pave the foundation that will build our future. A message from U.S. Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition and by the Graham School for Cattlemen with over 100 years of continuous service to the cattle industry. To find out more, visit us online at grahamschool.com. Hi there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and I'm joined by the Director of Production Animal Field Investigations for our Veterinary Diagnostic Lab here at K-State, Dr. Greg Hanslicek. And, and Greg, we're talking about anaplasmosis in cows and we've talked about what it is, what the cows are going to look like and, and now we, we need to treat them. So let's start, about, let's start out with gathering them. What are some of the things, pitfalls, things that producers need to think about when they're handling these, these oxygen deprived cows? Wild cowboys equals dead cows. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. So, you know, dogs, uh, run, moving those animals fast will kill off a certain percentage of the old cows. So walking them very, very slowly to the chute is the best thing to do. Got to take your time. Got to let the animal catch its breath. 
stay oxygenated, get it to the chute. Okay, when we get it to the chute, of course, we want to make sure that our producers are working with their local veterinarian. We always recommend to work with, 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 with our alumni and beyond at, mm -hmm. and, and that. But, uh, but what are some of the different philosophies in treatment of these, these cows? Are they treatable? They are treatable uh, in the basic uh, tetracyclines. So LA-200, Biomice, and those tetracyclines uh, at labeled dosage will reduce the number of parasites in the red blood cells. So the treatment's it, it's pretty rapid, and it's a pretty good treatment for reducing the clinical signs in these animals. So, so is there any, uh, you know, we, we have feed grade tetracyclines. Is that something that's that's enough for treatment or is that something I mean you don't know if you get it in the animal right but uh, well and as you know feed grade antibiotics you can't go off label so right. you can't feed it for another reason you can't feed them more you can't feed them less and to my knowledge the labeled uh, antibiotics for feed say for the control of anaplasmosis so it's not basic, for the treatment it's not for the treatment it's for the control whatever that means so if you have a herd that you that has clinical anaplasmosis you're better off going with the injectable type get them in and, and and sometimes you know treat everybody or treat a portion of them or just treat the one showing the clinical signs i would use your veterinarians gotcha. uh, recommendation on that because everybody has their own experience and their own recommendations and I would just use the local your local veterinarian for that can't can't go wrong can't go wrong there well let's jump into some of the prevention then I know we're going to we're going to go to a uh, break here after a bit but let's go ahead and start in with some of the prevention is there a vaccine for anaplasmosis there is a vaccine in the United States there's one vaccine it's a killed product it's uh, it's on a provisional license from the USDA meaning USDA says you haven't gone through all the hoops to prove that it works, but we recognize there's a need. It's approved state by state, so if a if a producer wants to use it, they get a hold of their practitioner. He calls the state veterinarian. The state veterinarian says yes, you can use it, or no, you can't. Okay. Well, I think that's a good place to to pause for for a break, and when we come back, we'll follow up on prevention and some of the things, biosecurity and different things that that producers need to know. Yep as we're moving forward. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate what you do for Kansas State University. And we'll come back to you guys in a minute. Thanks for watching Doc Talk this morning and we'll see you here after the break. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. This is Agriculture Today from Kansas State University. Well, after over a decade of research, K-State animal scientists have discovered that by feeding a specific grain to feedlot cattle, the beef from those cattle ends up with a high content of a highly desirable human nutrient, that is, omega-3 fatty acids. Here's K-State feedlot scientist Jim Druyard. We alter their diet, so we incorporate ingredients into the diet that themselves contain omega-3 fatty acids, um, such as flaxseed. That's a very rich source of omega-3 fatty acids. And so uh, adding 5 to 10 percent flaxseed to the diet, uh, we can get maybe a, a 10 or 12-fold increase in the omega-3 content of the beef. This is K-State Research and Extension. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. 
Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a Power Stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Hi there, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Greg Hanslicek. And Dr. Hanslicek is the Director of Production Animal Field Investigations here at Kansas State University's Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. And we've been having a discussion on anaplasmosis in beef cattle. We've talked about what it is. It's a bacteria that affects red blood cells, which decreases oxygen carrying capacity of these critters. And we've talked about the clinical signs and, and what we look for and how we're going to treat it, but really prevention's the key. And some of the things that, that we talked about, we've already talked about the vaccine. Now let's talk about other methods of, of control. And so it's biosecurity. Biosecurity wow. and of, of blood, right? Yes. And First of all, do not bring animals in from the outside if, if you do not know what their anaplasmosis status is, because you're going to be vac you're going to be doing things to those animals that transfer blood, unless you're changing needles between each animal and those kind of things. So keeping it out of the herd in the first place is probably the best step. Yep. So if you don't have it and you bring an animal that does in, we're going to have problems with your your animals at the house, and vice versa. If you bring in animals that haven't been exposed to it and you have it in your herd, there's, there could be some issues. So the prevention of blood from an infected animal to the blood of a non-infected animal is the key. That's exactly right. So what are some of the things we think about there? Well, f fly control, I you mean, bet. the best we can, and it's stable flies and horse flies, which our fly control isn't really that great for those uh, insects, but still fly control is important. Uh, at least disinfecting or changing needles between animals if you have it, that way you're not transferring it. Uh, if you're using tattoo pliers, disinfect the pliers between calves, th those kind of, anything well, the, to keep the blood from contaminating. And what, it, what it's doing is to some of us is, is things that people that when, when, you know, back in the 80s and things like that, the people that lived in, in the Florida and South Texas and, and Western U.S. region, they were having to do all the time, changing needles. You know, we'd always hear the stories about anaplasmosis in, in those climates. And, and so, you know, it's something that may be new to us, but it's not new to a lot of folks. That's exactly right. <laughs> but uh, disinfect that, the, your equipment, uh, castration, knives, anything, Newberry knife. Anything that gets bloody needs to be disinfected. Any kind of disinfectant that's better one than the other? Or? Not really. Just get the blood off. Even, even pure water is okay. Just get the blood off before you go to the next animal. And it's important to note that, it, you know, that this isn't a zoonotic disease. It is not. Okay, so it's not something that human, uh, that contact with the blood of, the, of cattle from anaplasmosis, a human being won't get that. Not this, not this anaplasmosis organism. That, that it, it, you're exactly right. It is not transparent. There is a human, but human to human, not animals to humans. That's exactly right. Well, we sure appreciate you being on the show today. It's always, always a pleasure to have you. Always good information and hope to have you back soon. My pleasure. We appreciate you watching Doc Talk as well. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you'd like to know more about what Dr. Hanslicek and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. You've been watching Doc Talk today. We're sure glad you joined us, and I'll see you down the road.
Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk, produced in cooperation with Drovers Cattle Network and Bovine Veterinarian. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. I give Multimin 90 every 120 days. The reason I give it every 120 days is because it seems to keep those cattle fresher. And, uh, but you can notice a, a great difference in those cattle from the day, the first day you give it to the last day you give it. When I run them through the chute and I give them a shot of that Multiman 90, I know exactly what I'm giving them. It's just more economical as a whole on the bucket bull side of the business. The simplicity of Multiman 90 is, just like I said, I know what I'm giving them and when I give it to them.